There are tons of crazy and intriguing prospects for the 2024 NFL Draft, and the guy we're going to talk about today is the son of arguably the best wide receiver in NFL history, had a crazy up and down career at Colorado and USC, and is right now making scouts go crazy. Today we're going to talk about Brendan Rice. He's the son of Hall of Famer Jerry Rice, and after going under the radar in high school, ended up going to Colorado, and now spent time at USC. While he's not the biggest or buzziest name in this year's draft class, Rice is currently projected as a late first round to early second round pick, and is a guy that many NFL franchises are looking to get their hands on. In today's video, I'm going to be joined by my friend Andrew from Saturday Shenanigans, as we're going to talk about his story, talk about his rise, how he got to this point, his college career, and what kind of impact he could have at the next level. But before we get started, if you're a big college football fan, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Let me know what draft prospect I should cover in my next video. And also be sure to leave a like if you want to support what I'm doing here. Now let's get started and talk about how Brendan Rice saved his dead football career. So in order to understand how Rice became a big time prospect, we first need to go back in time. Rice was obviously the son of Jerry Rice, who was a Hall of Famer, and he ranks as the NFL's all time leading receiver but unfortunately he was not in Brendan's life very much. Those two weren't the only big names in the Rice family though, as his older brother Jerry Jr. also played football. He ended up playing at both UCLA and UNLV, and would go to Washington as an undrafted free agent before he would tear his labrum. This happened back in 2014, and he never played in an NFL game. Football was also always a big deal to Brendan. He said, quote, that football has honestly been life to me. I need that football, and that football is mine. After a short stint of playing soccer as a kid, his mom would eventually let him put on the helmet when he turned six. She was concerned about the injury risk and thought this could be harmful to her son. She said, quote, I think with the concussions, there is a big fear. But you know, if it is something they want to do and I took it from him, I think it would break him. His mom would eventually let him play, but Brendan didn't exactly get what he wanted when it came to family. In Brendan's 17 years, he had never shared the same roof as his father and the relationship his parents had had many challenges. Through all of it, his parents were able to put their differences aside though, and for the betterment of their son, they made it work. That was something Brendan always appreciated. Eventually, like his father, he would start to excel at the game of football, and everyone had high expectations for him when he stepped foot at Chandler High School. And at the time, ironically, his stepdad was his coach. As a freshman, he was six foot two and 175 pounds, and in the words of his coach, he said he had great hands and that he'd play varsity football as a freshman. That's extremely rare. But would he wear his dad's number? Unfortunately, probably not. He said, quote, It's something that I would have to think over, considering I don't want the help of his name to get me places in life. Brendan went up later saying in a YouTube interview that he got used to people thinking that he was going to be cocky because he was Jerry's son, but he admitted he was much more of a quiet figure who just wants to get the job done and go under the radar. When it came to recruiting, there were some doubts about his ability. Many coaches expressed concerns with his lack of speed, but through diligence and hard work, he was able to actually get his 100 meter dash time a full second quicker. He went from 11.7 seconds to 10.78. He said, quote, college coaches thought I was too stiff and too slow. Even my best friend doubted me. He actually ran a 10.3 and I told him I'm gonna run a 10.78 this year, I promise you that. These improvements would help both on the recruiting trail and on the football field. His ability to get faster and willingness to try new things grabbed college scouts attention. He ended up receiving 21 division one offers and as a junior, he caught 49 passes for 729 yards and 11 touchdowns. Fun fact, early on in his high school career, Tyler Shuck was actually his starting quarterback. What's wild is Shuck will be in his seventh year at Louisville this fall. But where was Rice going to go? He ended up choosing Colorado over Arizona State, Oregon, and Texas A&M. Why the Buffaloes? He said, quote, I believe in Coach Mel Tucker. I truly believe what he's building for the program, and I want to be a part in helping that 2020 class. I thought about it and I was thinking I can go to Arizona State and be a part of a class or I can go to Colorado and make my own class and lead my own class. I can have people down the road in three years tell me, Brendan, thank you. Huh, that whole coaching thing didn't end up really working out for him because of Mel Tucker, but Ryan had a ton of hype and he had a great high school career. In total, he caught 102 passes for 1,788 yards and 22 touchdowns. Came in three years of varsity football, and according to 24-7 Sports, Rice was a four-star recruit, the number 55 wide receiver, and the 327th best player in the class of 2020. Now I'm going to turn it over to my buddy Andrew, who's going to talk about his college career, his NFL hype, and what happened in the last four years to him. On October 15, 2019, Brendan Rice committed to play for the Colorado Buffaloes with head coach Mel Tucker. 
Unfortunately for Rice, just three months after his commitment in January of 2020, Coach Tucker had resigned from the school and decided to take his talents to East Lansing with Michigan State. This was heartbreaking for Buffs fans and players, considering that he had pledged his loyalty to the program just hours before leaving them behind. Luckily, this didn't bother Rice as he decided to stick it out with Colorado and the next coaching staff instead of exploring his options like so many players do with a coaching change. Colorado was coming off three straight 5-7 and seven seasons heading into 2020, and they were looking for someone to get them to consistent bowl eligibility. In late February, Carl Durrell was announced to be the new head coach. Brendan knew that he was going to be up for some high-level competition in camp during the offseason, with other wide receivers such as sophomore Dimitri Stanley, freshman talent Levante Chenault, and senior leader Katie Nixon, who had been a top target for the Buffs for the last two years. This wasn't a situation where Rice was going to walk in there and be the man. He'd have to earn his time. But then, of course, the starting job became the least of people's problems when COVID shut everything down in March. This jeopardized Colorado and the rest of the teams in the Pac-12 that season. Conferences like the ACC, SEC, and Big 12 started playing their games in early September, like usual. Instead, the Pac-12 opted for a condescended seven-game conference schedule that started on November 7th. This threw a lot of teams off, but many believe this actually worked in Colorado's favor, as many of their tough matchups got canceled. They went 4-1 in their Pac-12 schedule, peaking at number 21 in the college football playoff rankings, which was a surprise to pretty much everybody in the college football world. Brendan Rice appeared in all games for the 2020 season and was very impressive in his limited time, showcasing his all-around athletic ability. On only six receptions, he gained 120 yards and two touchdowns, announcing himself as a big play threat. He also returned a punt for an 81-yard touchdown and had a few 40-yard returns on kickoffs. He was given the team's award for the top offensive freshman, as well as an honorable mention for the Pac-12 Offensive Freshman of the Year. Again, a very limited sample size, but he showed promise in multiple facets of the game. The 2021 season comes around, and it was time for Brendan Rice to step into a bigger role for Colorado. Although the Buffs went 4-8, and eight, making the 2020 season look like it was a fluke, Rice had an excellent sophomore season. He finished second on the team in receptions with 21, receiving yards with 299, and was the team leader in receiving touchdowns with 3. Although he didn't have any touchdowns in the return game like he did the year prior, he put up 469 yards. Also, Coach Durrell experimented with Rice out of the backfield, and on 6 carries, he averaged 9 yards. There was nothing that Brendan Rice couldn't do on the field. This is where things get interesting. Brendan Rice had no intention of leaving Boulder and playing somewhere else in 2022. But as we know, at the end of the 2021 season, there was a coaching change that took the college football world by storm. It was Lincoln Riley departing from Oklahoma and taking the head coaching job at USC. Riley saw the skills of Rice and knew it would be a good fit in his offense, with quarterback Caleb Williams most likely following him to USC. Lincoln Riley had offered Rice in January of 2022, and Brendan couldn't turn it down. He said, quote, I got a couple calls, but as soon as I heard the Lincoln call, you just had to go. Especially with USC and its big name, you gotta come. You have to. Man, it was quick. I was shocked. Brendan Rice got exactly what he wanted this season in 2022. Big production on a winning team. While Colorado was busy being one of the worst teams in the Power 5 with a 1-11 record, USC was busy being in the college football playoff race. They were one game away from a spot in the college football playoffs, going 11-3 on the year. Rice set career highs that year and game started at 12, receptions at 39, yards at 611, and also touchdowns with four. He continued to be a threat on special teams, earning an all-Pac-12 honorable mention. Brendan Rice was in a perfect spot at USC, surrounded by great staff and players. What more could you want as an electric wide receiver? You're getting tons of targets in the Lincoln Riley pass-happy offense, Plus, you have the Heisman winner, Caleb Williams, throwing you dimes. Come on now. If you thought Rice was cooking in 2022, just wait till I tell you what he did in 2023. Yet again, he put up career highs in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. 45 receptions, which was six more than the year prior, 791 yards, almost 200 more than 2022, and a team leading 12 touchdowns which was more than his first three years combined. Think about all the talent that USC had at wide receiver in 2023. Mario Williams, Zachariah Branch, Deuce Vaughn, Taj Washington. Rice had to beat out all of these guys. We're not going to talk about the disappointing 8-5 record for the Trojans this season because it was mainly on the defense and had nothing to do with Rice or the offense. On December 8th of 2023, Brendan Rice officially announced that he'd be forgoing his senior season in college football and declaring for the 2024 NFL Draft. According to scouts, he has a good frame and size, quickness, catch radius, and downfield blocking ability, 
with his weaknesses being long speed and ball adjustments. He's slated to be a second or third option in his career as an NFL wide receiver. At the recording of this video, he's projected as a mid to late day two pick. But of course, this is subject to change depending on his performance at the combine. Maybe you're watching this video after the draft because your team just took him. If so, you got a good one. Scott, as always, thanks for having me on. So yeah, I appreciate Andrew talking about Brendan Rice during his college career and how he could impact the NFL. If you're not already subscribed to the Saturday Shenanigans channel, I publicly vouch for him. I think he's the next big college football YouTuber, so be sure to check out his channel. He does a lot of hard work, is a great guy, and you're definitely not going to regret it. Overall, Brendan Rice is a pretty intriguing story. He kind of went under the radar in high school, went to a school that was really bad, and then was barely talked about at USC because of USC's disappointing season and his more quiet and humble personality. Except though, Rice is a guy who's definitely going to translate to the NFL, and while he probably won't be as successful as his father, just him getting to the NFL is a big deal, as there are so many sons of former NFL stars that end up flaming out, get into trouble, or come nowhere close to their father's legacy. Who knows what will happen to Rice, but for now, he's probably going to be a day two selection, will do a lot for an NFL team, and continues the Rice family legacy. But what do you guys think? If you're a USC or Colorado fan, what do you think of Brendan Rice? How do you guys think he will do in the NFL? And what prospects should I cover next? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.